not everything that people make in small towns is about food. With Woodcrafters, we're gonna see how furniture is made and how local people are involved in making and building things. Camera Woodcrafters, we manufacture architectural woodworking products. We do virtually everything. Entire house packages in the Bow Valley, a lot of hotel work, Lake Louise, Banff, Jasper, restaurants and residences in Calgary and Canmore. We thrive on making things that last, that you don't have to fix. And if you get a cabinet made or a piece of furniture, it should probably last longer than you. And that's kind of what we're going for. And it's hard to find the people that value that still, I gotta be honest. You're getting compared to Ikea and Home Depot these days, so. How do you compete when they're, when they're looking at it like that? So you find certain customers that really see the value in that. My father started it in 1979 in Canmore. They basically found a house that they could build a garage to start a business. As a kid, I really liked playing in the sawdust and humming to the sound of the machines. I worked my summers in the shops as they evolved and, and then started installing after high school, and then I left, said I wanted nothing to do with it, and came back about 12 years ago and did my apprenticeship in the business and actually spending full years in the shop and starting to make things and learning and kind of honing the skill was, I enjoyed doing that and there's a great satisfaction with, with making something and seeing the final product. Now it's different, the satisfaction is not so much hands-on making things, but keeping people employed and being a part of the community. We've got 15 employees now. There is three people that actually apprenticed here and are still working here. Then they did their apprenticeship after high school and others that we have brought in and call Canmore home now. If they've done like work experience courses or in high school, if they've did shop classes, if they didn't have any of that and they just want to give it a go, then we give anyone really a, a go. I got into it by accident. I tried to go into art class and it was full, so they put me in shop class and I never looked back. It's immensely satisfying. It's creative, it's variable, a huge sense of pride. I can look at what I did at the end of the day and they will be installed for decades yet and people will enjoy them that long. It's the most artistic of the trades. You get the most range of opportunity to do whatever you want. You get to work with beautiful stuff all the time, see some really cool things. And if I ever get to like go to Banff to one of the lodges we've done or something, we sit at the bar there, it's like, yeah, we've built all that there, and yeah, it's pretty cool. We try and bring focus for the students to the trades because it is a viable place to get a job and succeed. We do a woodworking award at the high school every year, so we donate a really nice hand plane for a student that has shown that he or she has excelled in the program. And when you think about it, wood shop is virtually maybe the only place they get to build something in school. There isn't a whole lot of that anymore. And the satisfaction of having something tangible uh, in your hands when you make something, or to look at and to hold and to see it, is a really rewarding thing. No one should go without that. This is the shop. So we process all the solid wood kind of in this area and then it goes over to get cut on the saw or sanded or shaped on the way and then off to a bench typically. So this is your CNC machine? Yes it is. Does this take people out of the job? Probably that's why we never got it for so long because if I have somebody programming it I can pay someone to run the machine. The process of making the piece of wood square and cutting it to length and all that stuff, we're still doing it the way they've done it for a long time. I'd also imagine this probably opens up opportunities for people that didn't thought they are going to end up in woodworking. Yeah, and you know, there's the whole computer realm to it now. That is continually changing every day you turn around. Your software's old. Oh, yeah. oh I just got it, like, <laughs> last week. six months ago. I don't know, really? Yeah quite adamant about it, recycling as much as possible for the longest time. My father had the idea of burning or reusing the wood waste, so we found somebody that could set that up for us, and we had just completed that. So far this winter, we've been heating this entire building, not just our space, on wood waste. So once you're a maker or you're a creator, it doesn't stop with woodworking. It goes on with the, the next thing and the next yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly, and you don't make money by doing this. You save money over yeah, 25, 30 years, but it's not really all about money. You want to make sure you're doing the right thing. And I have young kids and I want to look out for that. So that's why we do it. It makes you feel good. 
The job is ever evolving. We don't do one thing all the time. So every day it's kind of something new, something different. We're always having to think outside the box. How are we going to make this? I think that keeps me going. Work shouldn't be something that you're dreading to go to every day. And if you enjoy making stuff out of wood or playing music or whatever it is, you should pursue that because you want to have fun at what you're doing in life.